Good morning, everyone. It's Detrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique, and I'm with you guys today to do a little quick tutorial on mastering a new skill for 2018. And we're going to take to work today on perfecting the simple wire loop. Um, you're going to need some tools for today's lesson. The most important two that you will have to have are a pair of flush cutters. These are some Zurons that I got recently by the Beadsmith, and they were only about nine bucks on um, Amazon. But the kinds you're looking for are the kind that have this flat side on the back, like this. You are not looking for the type that have this rounded look to them here. This is called a side cutter. We want a flush cutter. And you're going to need a pair of pliers or some type of mandrel. I'm going to be using this pliers today, um, three sets actually, just to demonstrate for you the different ways that these work. These are just simple round nose pliers. These are Beat Smith something or another. Here, I think they are um, Beatalons by Beat Smith. These are Euro Tool. These are multi-stepper looping pliers, and as you can see here, they have six different. Uh, diameters uh, that you can make your loops on or form jump rings or other wire t wire components and these are the one step looper the pair that I have makes a 1.5 millimeter loop and that folks is the inside diameter and you can see that this little tiny thing here in the middle <coughs> excuse me is actually the mandrel that the loop forms around so it is relatively small but I like this for making um, beaded links and we'll get into more of that later um, I just have out here um, a wire gauge tool this is so you can determine the gauge of your actual thickness of the gauge of your wire um, for example the thicker the wire the bigger your loops gonna look from the outside edges so it will be the inside diameter would be the same no matter uh, what thickness of wire based on the size of your looping pliers however you could have a much larger looking loop if you're using a really thick wire so to way that this is just a simple head pin so the way you use this is I will take this head pin and I'm going to come around all of these different little um, sections here until I find the one that my wire will slide into and as you see here it will slide right through to the in this 20 gauge so this is a 20 gauge head pin here's 22 it will not go in here's 20 it goes in easily okay and then I also just have this little ruler that has um, a centimeters and millimeters guide here on the side of it all right now here are some different um, types of artistic wire uh, different colors but more importantly what I want to talk about are the gauge of the wires so when you are uh, needing to make you know either a beaded link or a head pin or an eye pin one of the most important things that's going to come up is what gauge of wire will actually fit through the beads that you're or crystals that you are trying to use for your project um, or you know if you are making a earring component uh, such as a you know a regular ear wire or a ring you know you'll want to use the sturdiest um, wire that will fit through your ear for an earring wire or for jump rings, you'll want to use the sturdiest um, wire that you can as it relates to the overall look and design of your project. So I have here some 20 gauge. And it's relatively stiff. And these are all dead soft artistic wires. This one happens to be phosphorus bronze, which is, you know, bronze, total bronze. It's not plated or anything like that. It's an actual bronze metal. This one is an antique brass colored over copper, and this is a 22 gauge. 
Sometimes I have to re resort to 22 because I can't get the 20 to fit through beads. And a lot of times um, you'll have to go even smaller when you're working with natural pearls or cultural pearls because pearls have really small uh, bead holes on them. So I, uh, for wire wrapping projects and a few things like that, I've noticed I've had to go down to a 24. We can also use head pins for practice. This is the way I suggest to go is to get some cheapo head pins at your local craft store and you can practice perfecting your loops with the head pins. All right, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and um, do this tutorial using head pins because they are really inexpensive. Um, so we'll just go with these for now. The most important thing that's going that you'll need to perfect and learn to do is to make a flush cut on the end, the working end of your wire. So here's this head pin, right? Say I want to make my loop here on this end. It's very important that I have a flush flat cut here on the very end, which this one has a nice flush cut, so I don't really have to use my wire cutters on that. But if I did, what I want to do is I want to take the flush side of my cutter, which is the back, and put that towards the end of my wire that I want to keep. And then I would just make a little snip, just like that, to snip off the little dull or, sh or the little sharp or slanted edge until I have a nice flat surface there to work with. Once you have a flush cut, uh, you'll want to decide, you know, how big you want the inside diameter of your loop to be. So these particular measurements, um, if I remember correctly, are 2, 2.5, 4, 5, 7, and 9 millimeters. And this, the size of the barrel will correlate directly to the inside diameter of the loop on your wire. Um, but we're going to start with our round nose pliers. And I like to mark my round nose pliers with a Sharpie marker so that I can make the same size loop every time, especially if I'm working on a project of, for beaded links or something like a chain where I need to have the same size loop every single time. So now that we have a flush cut on the end of our wire, let's go ahead and start with the round nose pliers. We're going to take our round nose pliers and we're going to grab a hold of our wire so that it sits between the jaw here lined up against my mark. Now, when I, I want to make sure that when I take my finger and rub like this, I do not feel any wire at all poking up. All I want to feel here are the actual barrels of my pliers. Now, I'm left-handed, and so I'll be rolling my uh, pliers with my left hand. Um, I take my thumb, and I hold it here against the barrel, just like this. And I'm going to be using my thumb to help push this wire around my barrel. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got everything grabbed in here flush so I don't feel anything. I'm going to use my thumb to push, and I'm going to roll this plier away from myself. It's a little hard for me to do at this angle so you can see, but I'm going to go ahead and try anyway. I'm going to keep rolling as far as I can roll, like that. Then I'm going to loosen my jaw, roll my pliers back without moving off of my little mark here that I made with my Sharpie. Then I'm going to continue on with my roll until my two wires come around and meet each other. Just like this. So now I have this little P shape on my wire. And what I want to do now is I want to straighten my loop. So I'm going to put my pliers back in. But I'm going to put the pressure on my wire down here, closest as I can get it to where these two wires come up against each other. So I'm going to put my pressure this way. And I'm just going to take my finger and hold it right here. And I'm going to rock back slightly till I have something that looks like this shape. Now you can see I didn't exactly have my two wires meeting, but that's okay. Because we can just use some regular pliers 
and close that on up just gently like so until they touch. Don't squeeze hard or you can overextend this curve and the wire will come around and cross over the wire and you don't want that to happen. So now let's try that again. Say I'm going to make a bar link or a an eye pin out of this. We'll just pretend that I strung some beads on here or whatever. But I'm going to make a loop. I'm not going to cut it off or anything right now. We'll get more into that later. When I make a loop on the other end of this wire, I want my loop direction to go in the opposite direction of this one. So you can see this one is coming up from the bottom and around to the top. So I'm going to hold this, my wire in here. And I'm going to roll in the opposite direction. So I've got it sitting here like this to where the opening is coming up from the bottom and over to the top. And I'm holding it so that this is not like this, but up and down like that. Now I'm going to feel with my finger and make sure I don't have any uh, thing poking up and that everything is flush. And I'm just going to take my thumb again and I'm going to start rolling my wire around. I'm going to open up a little bit and then clamp back down and roll until I feel the wires touch. And so I'm not quite getting there because it's a little bit hard for me to do on camera. But we'll just let me go ahead and roll it just a little more. And now my wires are touching. So now I'm going to come with my pliers again down here on the mark. And I'm going to put my pressure as much as I can get it to where these two wires meet. So that when I rock back, my two ends look identical, but the loops are opening and closing to the opposite direction. Like that. Alright, so there's one. And I used my mark, of course, that had makes the bigger loop here on my round nose pliers. One thing I do, so this is approximately a four millimeter loop. I can check that by bringing it up and looking at the inside diameter here of my hole. And I'm ordering myself a caliper so I can be more precise if I need to, but you can see that that's approximately four millimeters. How I measured that so that I could mark it with a sharpie here is I took the barrel of my round nose pliers and I just laid the tip here on the outside edge where I start measuring the millimeters and then I just slowly moved it up forward until the barrel reaches the four millimeter mark and I took my pen and made a little tiny mark right there then I just used the flat edge to roll around and make the line around the barrel like that in case you're wondering so now I have another head pin here and I've flush cut both ends with my flush cutter and I'm ready to show you guys how you would make matching and uh, even loops using this, these looping pliers. So I'm going to use um, not the smallest one here but I'm going to use the next one up which this is a 2.5 millimeter barrel. I'm going to do the same exact thing when I go to position my wire in the barrel I want to make sure that I can't feel anything poking up and that the wire is flush with the top of those barrels like that. Now because I want to use the wider barrel and I'm left handed I'm holding this barrel farthest away from myself and I'm going to position my thumb my, of my right hand here on the smaller barrel. Then I'm going to start my roll so I'm going to take a Hold my wire with my fingers and I'm just going to go ahead and start rolling away from myself. Just like this. As far as I can go. I'm going to open slightly. Roll the pliers back. It doesn't matter if your wire slips up and down on these pliers because the barrel is the same length. From the bottom to the top. So now I can just roll on around until I feel my wires touch. Like that. And I can pull it off, and there's my cute little P shape. And now, if I want to, I want to position this again so that it doesn't look like a P, but it looks like a loop. So I'm going to come back in with my pliers, 
and I'm going to apply the pressure as close to where those two wires touch as I can as I kind of gently just rock it back like so. Just barely rock it back like that. And if you don't get it perfect the first try, you can always put it back on and rock it a little bit more. And there, I like that a lot better. So there's one end. So now once again, if I'm going to be using this as a beaded link or such, I would want to position this wire so that it, the loop itself is coming from the bottom. The wire is rolling from the bottom towards the top. I'm going to hold it straight up and down like this. And then I'm going to get the opposite end of the wire nice and flush with the barrel. Just like that. This is what it looks like. And then I'm just going to roll myself another loop on this end. And roll until I feel the two wires touch. I'm going to come back over here with my plier and apply that pressure to where the two wires are meeting up so that I can rock it back into this pretty little loop like that. And then this is what I have. So now I'm going to use, uh, show you guys an example using these one-step loopers. I need to go ahead and get a new head pin. It's already flush cut on this end. So I'm just going to take my flush cutters. I'm going to go in here and make a flush cut and snip off the head of that pin. With these particular pliers, they don't, uh, like they come in a couple of different sizes, but I only happen to have this one. And so I, the only loops I can make with this are always going to be 1.5 millimeter loops. So that's kind of a drawback in my opinion. I'd much rather use this tool where I have several different options available to me for making my perfect loops. On this side of the pliers, you see this little hole. So this is where your ex, um, excess wire can poke through if you need it to. On this side of the wires, here is the actual mandrel, this little tiny mandrel in here, like I showed you earlier, around which my loop's going to be formed. We have this gap right in here where we put our wire through. So if you see how I'm pushing, positioning my wire, and I'm kind of I'm squeezing gently right now because I don't want to drop my wire. But you see how I have just the slightest little bit poking out on this of the hole over here. That's where the excess wire it automatically gets cut off by this plier, and that's going to pull that piece out of my way as my loop forms right here. So now I've got that sitting in there. All I need to do is squeeze in one motion, and you see how my little excess piece of wire just flopped right off. And here is my little loop. And if I prefer, uh, sometimes it will not rock itself back. Like um, this one looks more like the P. So I can just come in here with my round nose pliers and rock it back myself. Just like that. Straight up and down like before. Then I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze. And now I have this. Now these pliers work really great for when you have beads and things already onto the head pin. I don't particularly care for how they make the loops look. With uh, You're just trying to make a simple loop. Because basically you're going to need to come in here and do some straightening anyway. So I'm going to once again stick, I'm just sticking my round nose pliers in. And I'm going to apply the pressure here where the two wires meet as I tilt back just a little bit like that. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And this is what it looks like now. And you can see that I'm still going to have to do some work because my... Uh, wires are not completely closed up so I would need, still need to come in here and pinch and 
until those two wires meet and my gap is completely closed. That's an awful lot of work for what took a lot less work using the multi-step plier. Alright, so when all is said and done, my, my choice for looping pliers for perfecting my simple loops, it's got to be the multi-step looping pliers just because basically it does not matter if you accidentally slip off of the mark it's not going to change the look of the loop and it'll be equal on both ends and that just makes it really easy and really simple uh, having said that I still do use my round nose pliers because I just want to keep in good form and perfect keep my skills sharp so every now and then I do just grab these pliers and I'll use those as well. And there's a lot, lot of other reasons to use your round nose pliers. They're very versatile other than just making simple loops. But here's one thing. Like when making a beaded link, I do prefer the one-step looper. What I'd like for you to do is to get to perfect your craft is to just get, like I said, some cheap head pins. And then just practice. Uh, make some different marks on your round nose pliers for the different sizes and just keep working until you um, feel like you are becoming a master at this particular skill. This skill is very important in jewelry making. Having the even and uniform looking links is, just makes the difference between professional looking jewelry and very unprofessional looking jewelry. There may be instances where you want different size loops on your ends and of course that's your prerogative and your design choice. But I'm I like I said I prefer using these multi-step loopers or my round nose pliers for my simple loop making. I do use the one step loopers uh for making beaded links if I've got a lot of them to make because they are a lot easier on your hand uh, if you're working you know with like I said making a lot of those beaded links and there are tons of videos out on YouTube for how to do these techniques if you have trouble with mine and things aren't working for you uh, just go ahead and go uh, you know search on YouTube or Google it there are tons of classes and documents out there I do have a a pretty good PDF, if I do say so myself, that I made back in November or December on perfecting the simple loop and making the beaded links. But we'll get into more of the beaded links later on. All right, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Jump over to the alluringbeadboutique.com. Uh, subscribe to the bead mat. There will be a lot of new things coming for bead mat subscribers in 2018 as soon as I can work on my website a little bit more. Um, I switched my hosting company to a new provider and I wound up having to upgrade the package that I from the one I originally chose. So right now the website is sitting there being um, moved from the D one DNS server to another over there at HostGator. So it's going to be a couple of days before I can get back to work on the bead map. But as soon as I get everything implemented, I will do a video and let you guys know what's going on. And until then, have fun making your simple loops. Jump over and check out uh, the new basics tutorials I put up over the weekend for square stitch and ladder stitch. Um, I'm going to have another video out, uh, getting a little bit more in-depth with square stitch this week. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.